here are some of the weirdest and most fascinating science experiments ever done. Number 9. God Helmet The realm of the unknown has always generated all kinds of speculation from the scientific community, especially when it comes to experiencing things that are related to religion or the presence of God. Originally named the Corin Helmet, after its creator Stanley Corin, this apparatus gained notoriety when many of the selected participants for the experiment noted that they felt a strange presence when they wore the helmet. Of course, the helmet then came to be known as the God Helmet. The whole process was based on subtle brain stimulation that's far weaker than regular magnetic stimulation, but as strong as the one generated by a hairdryer or a landline phone. Subjects of the study would put on a helmet with specially placed solenoids or coiled wires laid on their temporal lobes. The helmet would then give an induction by a self-generated magnetic field with fluctuating energy. The subject would be seated in an acoustic chamber that would shield any other emissions or radiation as an attempt to see what are the effects of geomagnetism on the human brain. It all sounds super duper scientific until you realize that the side effects that many of the subjects claimed to have had weren't ever proven. Other researchers attempted to replicate the experiment with other people and noted that none of them would experience the same godlike spiritual sensation. Of course, Corin and his team later claimed that these subsequent experiments were flawed. Number 8. Carlsberg Social Experiment Judgment calls are fairly important to have a functional life. But when it comes to judging others based on their looks, there should be a lot more we take into account. Or at least that's what this special social experiment created as an ad for Carlsberg tried to tell us all. Using a highly exaggerated stereotype that millions of people know, you know, the rugged, ultra-masculine, very threatening biker guy, the beer company managed to create an experiment that tested the way we perceive someone based on their looks first impressions would determine what the outcome of the ad would be. A group of couples went to a theater to watch a movie just to discover that the theater was filled with the biker men basically everywhere. There were only two available seats, which then prompted the couples to decide whether or not they would sit among the rugged looking men. Many of the couples decided to leave, as they felt uncomfortable with the presence of the men, proving just how judgmental we can be. But for those couples who were bold enough to take a seat, the reward was much more fun. A big cheer from the biker field theater and some free beer. See, being nice actually does pay off. Number 7. Human Cyborg Automation seems to be becoming the final frontier for many scientists nowadays. But when it comes to making automation part of their own bodies, that's when things start turning weird. Professor Kevin Warwick of Coventry University has crossed a border not many have dared to cross. He has slowly used his own body as a test subject for his bionic research that aims to breach the gap between humans and robots. Popularly known as Captain Cyborg, Warwick first went under the knife in 1998 to implant a chip the size of a coin into his arm that would communicate with his nervous system and brain. With this small chip, he was able to speed through his office building. Doors would automatically open when he arrived, granting him direct access, and even the lights would turn on. In 2002, he took it even further, when he got a 100 electrode array implanted in the median nerve fibers in his left arm. The whole idea behind this was to see if he would be able to send signals directly into a computer. And it worked! After the surgery, Warwick was able to control lights and a robotic hand across the Atlantic. But he didn't stop there. He even convinced his wife to come along the robotic journey with him. For his next experiment, he gave his wife a color-changing necklace that was connected to his nervous system. And then he got her an implant on her left arm to see how emotional responses could be shared between individuals. It seems that Warwick's got no boundaries when it comes to trying things out. Number 6. Invisible Gorilla Experiment We all know that attention span is something some of us need to work on, sometimes a lot. This was a task that both Christopher Chabris and Daniel Simons from Harvard set out to explore and, in turn, 
discovered some very important facts about how human beings perceive the world. This awareness study did not involve any wildlife animals, just humans put on a test to determine their capacity to notice details that, in any other situation, would seem pretty obvious. Participants in the study were asked to watch a video of people playing basketball and to count the exact number of passes the white team did on screen. They were spot on to count the number of passes, but failed to notice a very visible detail. A man wearing a gorilla suit who gracefully walks across the center of the frame, stays there for a while, and then walks away. Not one of the participants took notice of this. Chabris and Simon's experiment went on to become a successful series of books, mainly because their discovery gave some interesting insight into how the human brain sometimes fails to realize that certain signals are as important as a task or idea that has been given more priority. The everyday illusions that sometimes cloud our judgment. Number 5. Stem Cell Disaster Some experiments seem fantastic. Some are well regarded, but some are just blatantly unethical. This is the case of a big fall that destroys the entire reputation of a well-known scientist. Professor Wang Wu Suk from Seoul National University in South Korea became a notorious figure in the field of embryonic stem cell development, with promising results that marveled the scientific community and the world alike. Although he was widely popular, concerns about the methods he used to gather eggs from women for his research were heavily questioned, with reports stating that some of the women had even been coerced into participating. A scandal was quickly set loose when reports surfaced that he and his team had illegally bought eggs without proper consent from the women involved. Added to this, some of the women who had agreed to donate their eggs were infertile but they were not told that their eggs were rated depending on their quality and used for the experiment. A number close to 75% of the eggs Wang used in his research were either purchased or traded illegally. 1,649 out of 2,236. After authorities were alerted about the situation and a formal investigation took place, Wang was convicted to two years in prison for embezzlement and bioethical breaches. Definitely not a good look. Number 4. Smoke in the Room Society as a whole has a lot of things we have not fully figured out yet. One of these inexplicable phenomenons is the way people react to threats or danger. A specific study performed by researchers Bib Latain and John M. Darley wanted to test how we as humans may react to a situation in the face of a palpable threat, but surrounded by a calm and uncaring group of people. Subjects would step into a room and were told to start filling out a test, just like any other social study. After a while, smoke would start coming from under the door, which would generally mean people would become alarmed and leave the room. What happened was quite surprising. Since the rest of the people in the room were in on the experiment, no one reacted. The subject, who was unaware of this part of the experiment, would then just carry on filling out the test and stay in the room. It turns out our response to danger is greatly influenced by our surroundings. A comparison noted that when alone, more than half the subjects would leave the room after two minutes after seeing the smoke. But when surrounded by a group of people who didn't seem to care, 9 out of 10 would stay and simply wave the smoke away from their eyes. As it turns out, when it comes to group dynamics, people tend to look for someone to take action instead of acting themselves. Who would have thought? Number 3. Separating Triplets Science has always found a way of marveling us with its findings, but sometimes the boundaries certain researchers cross to do so are very questionable. Ethical concerns are always on the line. Back in the 60s and 70s, a group of researchers led by Peter Nabauer and Viola Bernard did something no one would have thought was legal, separate triplets and adopt them out to different families. The idea behind this, as questionable as it is, was to see what would be the differences these triplets would report during their lives, a way of answering the decade-long question that psychologists have tried to solve about nature versus nurture. When the situation became public 20 years later, two of the brothers reunited and made a public outcry about the horrible situation they had been put into without their consent. Bernard was reported to have justified the experiment 
as a way of allowing each brother to develop their individual personality, even when they were stripped of the opportunity of growing up together. The triplets, named Robert Shafran and David Kelman, said they were robbed of 20 years of their lives. One of the triplets, Edward Gallen, committed suicide in 1995. The most troubling fact is that, to this day, the results of the experiment are only known by him and Bernard, for they are kept locked away in an archive facility in Yale University. Number 2. Marshmallow Test Experiment This one is for impatient people. Life and science have found ways of teaching the importance of waiting the right amount of time to get what we want in life. And apparently, there's a biological reason for this. In a series of tests conducted between the 60s and 70s by psychologist Walter Mischel, key indicators of future life success were discovered through a seemingly simple experiment, telling children to wait for candy. Although it may sound like a deceitful technique, the methodology implemented by Michel proved highly precise in determining successful traits that could nurture in their early stages of development. A child was taken into a room and presented with a treat, which was generally a marshmallow, and told to wait 15 minutes before eating it and they would receive another marshmallow. The expert would then exit the room and the child would be posed with the possibility of waiting for them and receiving another treat or simply eating the candy right away. This sparked the term we now know as delayed gratification, which further research confirmed was an important skill children would need to develop to be successful in many areas, including academics. The research even found that the children who waited the 15 minutes scored higher on their SATs. Waiting does have its perks. Number 1. Vacanti Mouse Finding creative and innovative solutions to problems is something science has always aimed to do. And in this case, organ shortage seemed to be the one problem many doctors and surgeons were facing, which is why Joseph and Charles Vacanti took it upon themselves to find a way to create human organs to supply to hospitals for transplants. In the mid-80s, Joseph Vacanti had asked a surgeon friend which was the most difficult organ to create or transplant, to which his friend replied, ears. He then immediately started developing a way to create a new human ear to solve the problem. They first started working on a scaffolding structure that would hold the cartilage they had already created. From there, they decided to implant on a living being. Since the material they used for the scaffolding is bioabsorbable, it would disappear over time and become a part of the mouse's body. When BBC heard the news about this back in 1997, the story blew up. The story of a mouse with an ear on his back became hugely popular. Although many concerns were raised about animal abuse in these kinds of experiments, Vacanti states that it was a safe way to experiment something necessary for science without anyone getting harmed. After some time, they decided to remove the ear from the animal's back, and the mouse lived a normal life. Here's what's next. James B. Murphy, a herpetologist and research associate at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, says that the behavior is very rare and is usually a sign of a snake at the end of its life. He says that when snakes are very sick, they'll bite themselves. Unlike mammals, snakes don't show emotions and have few behavioral responses.